a fire uh, sale triggered by liquidity problem is the most typical case of a negative externality. The key observations, the liquidity concern in the face of the uh, criticism that the proposed liquidity ratio net stable funding ratio and uh, liquidity uh, ratio also, coverage ratio, could jeopardize the economy with capital being trapped in liquidity buffers. This is very important. This is very important. Uh, you see, the traditionally, traditionally uh, uh, most governments were subsidizing debt and penalizing common equity. How's that? They concentrate the uh, advantage, take advantage of the profits from those who was development and they forget about the common stocks. Right? The yes, price. and also because of interest expenses tax deductible. But the profits from common equity is taxable. So uh, they tax this and they exempt this from the tax. This creates the, uh, uh, you know, an inequilibrium, yes. Uh, this should change. Sometimes some guys uh, say that uh, the uh, debt sometimes provide uh, an, an, uh, tax shield. Hmm? Tax shield. Mm -hmm. A tax shield? No. no, no uh, the Because if you have borrowed money from the public, either the public or the banks, uh, they say the debt discipline the borrower. Uh, studies and research have not proved or have, uh, we have no evidence to support this argument. So, common equity is better for the economy and uh, it will prevent systemic risk, systemic risk for the whole economy. Hybrid capital will be phased out of tier one capital in three years. So all the instruments that have the characteristic of debt and equity will be uh, getting rid of or will not be, uh, uh, will no longer be part of uh, tier one capital, tier one capital. The role, of ex the role of external ratings, uh, although uh, some arguments claim that external rating agencies like Moody's, Fitch, for part of the financial crisis, no regulation, no rules have put in place to uh, discipline such agencies. <laughs> The leverage ratio, the risk weighted uh, prescribed by the committee earlier was much merigant as one of the reasons for the financial crisis. Allowing bank, banks extremely high leverage. Uh, the committee has not changed 
the methodology, but has introduced a simple leverage ratio of common equity to total assets, which has uh, been set at 3%, which uh, I believe is very low. Uh, this is still too low and allows banks to lend 33 times its capital. Huge. Valuation of assets. While the common equity requirements has been defined in terms of the risk weighted assets, a significant contribution factor to the problem has been the valuation of assets. You know the fair value accounting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it was a reason or a, a cause for part of the, the, the problem. Because as regulators, we allow the, uh, the, the the reserve or the uh, accumulative change in, uh, uh, for, uh, from uh, securities held as available for sale mm -hmm. to be part of the capital. <coughs> so this caused part of the problem. In our economies, we still have the dominance of the banking sector in the financial intermediation. Uh, we have only banks as intermediaries. Uh, banks still the main intermediaries in capital and money markets. Their business is uh, almost accepting deposits and from the public and lending them to the, the companies or those who uh, lack liquidity. <coughs> so this is why most of our banks were not affected by the financial crisis. Uh, it is important to maintain the bank's function as a financial intermediary while preventing their excessive risk taking. Uh, banks in, in, in America and Europe play uh, you know, a, a role more than intermediation. They, their most part of their profits comes from investment banking. So we want to keep this in our economies, keep our banks as financial intermediaries. Some emerging economies are experiencing large scale capital flows as well as signs of overheating. So because of the problem there, the capital is flowing to our markets. This should be addressed by the regulators. This table uh, is the, describes the contribution to the world uh, GDP growth. It is statistics of the IMF. So in the United States in 2009, the growth was minus 0 0.5, 2010.5, 2011 0.5, euro area minus 0 0.6, 2% and 2%, Japan minus 3%, uh, 2%, 1%, Emerging Asia 1.5, 2.4, and 2.2. Other countries minus 0 0.6, 1.4, 1.3. .1 so we see the contribution of emerging Asia to the world growth is the greatest. <coughs> 